back to Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One, here to inspire and empower your wig journey. Today I have two brand new style releases by Renee of Paris for winter 2022. New colors too, coming up. So the two new styles that I have to show you today are the Renee of Paris Wren in the color Milky Opal R, which is a new color. And then I also have Tara in another new color called Maple Frost. Now the Wren style was sent to me directly from Wig Studio One for this review today. And then I actually purchased the, uh, the Tara style with my own funds from Wig Studio One. Drop below this video. You can see a link directly to this st these styles. You can check out all the colors, pricing, and information. We invite you to shop at Wig Studio One. If you have any questions for us, please reach out to support at wigstudioone.com. And remember, the Renee of Paris brand is an automatic 30% off at checkout at Wig Studio One. So which one would you like me to unpack first? I'm really excited about the Wren style. Um, I have a little bit of high hope for Wren. It's a long tousled beach wave style with some fringe. We have seen new styles come on the market like this in a uh, recent past. I'm thinking of the, um, the California beach waves by Tresalor. And then there was one by Henry Margu called Willow. And I'm sure, oh, the Verona style by Aesthetica. So there have been a few. Now those pieces are a little pricier just because they have a lot of monofilament features to them. Um, and the Wren here is a traditional cap. So I really wanna check this one out because it could be quite a bargain. So I think I'm gonna do that one first. Now the Terra is an, a short little wavy angled bob style cut with a really long front, um, definitely an A-line type style. So let's get started. Let's start with our Wren today. Telltale Renee of Paris, high fashion, red boxes here. Okay. Looks like the right side up. Okay, there it is in the box. Wow, that color. Okay, so pulling it out of the box. Gotta stand back on this one just so you can get the full length um, of the style. You know, it's probably gonna be right around 20 inches, 20 to 22, I'm guessing at that. Um, so let's unpack it here. The net. All right, they knew it. Do a nice job here. They have some tissue paper to help hold the shape of the style. And then that's supported with a little straw-like structure there. And what fell down was the silicone pack for moisture control. Wow, would you look at that color? Oh my goodness. Okay, well, I can't wait to get into that for sure. <laughs> so here's our hang tag and the way it's displayed here. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the tags on this style first so that we can take a look at the cap and then apply it. This is what the top of it looks like, a little bit of a weave pattern there. And when, <clears throat> when these wicks arrive right out of the box, it's really flat and compressed. That, it actually protects it a little bit from friction um, during the shipping process. You may just have to work on that a little bit. I know I do um, when I start working the style for my tastes and preferences. Okay, look at that shimmery color and beachy wave. Wow, let's get into this cap just real quick before I forget. Um, we talked about it being a traditional cap, which I'm excited about because I feel like the price point is gonna be a little better compared to some of the monofilament styles that are like this. So there's your traditional cap. Uh, the wefting on the top is covered by a rose lace mesh material. And then you've got a nice velvet piece right at the front with a kind of a hidden weft built right in. This really does help the hairline quite a bit and adds a little bit of comfort right there at the front. 
and then you have a nice velvet ear tab. Look at the amount of fiber that's spliced in, and it's spliced in clear up into the middle of that ear tab. I'm expecting some really nice coverage there. An extended felted or velvet nape, it feels like, and then we have the strap adjusters here, okay? And I'm not going to make an adjustment right away because I really want to examine the fit and be able to tell you just how it fits me right out of the box without any adjustments. Okay. But first, before I apply it, I do want to go through my usual maneuvers here to wake it up. Everybody always says, well, Taz, mine doesn't look like yours coming right out of the box. So I have vowed to do a little more unboxings for you so you can see exactly what I do. Now, beyond this, you really don't want to do a whole lot if you plan to return the style, as that may jeopardize your return. So just giving it a quick shake up and down, not in a swirly motion. And then I really want to pick and tease that part um, a little bit to wake up those fibers, because as I mentioned, they're really tightly compressed there. And on an open cap style, we're really going to need to pry those up out away from the cap to give it a nice natural look because generally you've got some permatees right there on top and if you can get in there and just rough up that permatees just a bit and, and do what I call springing the part which is to lift the fiber up out of that bed of permatees it's always going to give you a more natural look I mean just because you have a permatease top doesn't mean that you have to suffer with a, a nesty look on the top. There's always things that you can do. Okay, so again, you'll see that I just kind of rough that up a little bit on top. I sprung that part. Let's see, I might just do that all the way around, just a couple of inches from the bottom or the base, okay, just to kind of pull that fiber away. It wakes it up, it makes it more wispy, it sets the movement free. Um, you see some, I get questions about this all the time. Somebody says to me, Taz, your wig doesn't look like so-and-so's wig or so-and-so's wig that just did a wig review and they wanna know what I've done. Well, it might be a better, better time to ask them what they haven't done. <laughs> because if you simply bring a wig out of the box and plop it on your head, it's gonna look matted down to your head and the movement is going to be stiff and it's going to look unnatural. So these are just a few of the things that I do to get ready for my review. Okay, again, I'm going to apply this without making any adjustments and I'll describe the fit right away. Okay, in terms of fit, I can tell you, right away that this is a very average fit. I'm gonna remove it and make just a very small adjustment. However, I'm gonna examine the stretch. There's not a whole lot of stretch on this style. I feel like it's perfectly average right out of the box and is meant to fit anywhere from like a 21 and a half to a 22 and a half circumference, which is perfectly, like I say, average. But like I said, I'm just gonna pull those adjusters in just a little to give me a nice secure fit. I didn't notice any baggy cap or extra gapping at the crown area. And that fit feels good, really good. Okay, so I'm gonna make my adjustment here. Wow, okay, that is a long one. <laughs> um, I don't know that I was prepared for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when I went from no wig to this wig, it kind of looks um, unnatural, doesn't it? But it doesn't take long to make it yours. So again, what I'm going to do is get in there with a wide tooth comb. Now, I prefer to use one with the more narrow teeth. This is a goodie brand that I've had for 10, 15 years. Um, I think I purchased it at Walmart. But what I do is I just get in there and lift. Poke down in that layer of permatease. Don't be afraid to dig right down in there and just gently lift. And that pulls again those fibers up out of the bed of permatease. 
The good news is you can part it wherever you like, or you don't really have to have any designated part. However, this is so long on the top that it's gonna have to part somewhere. Now I'm gonna leave this lifted because I want to talk to you about these bangs. Swirling around in the bangs just to kind of wake them up. I'm noticing a couple of things. They're heavily layered, textured, and wispy. This is a nice natural density. It lays really nicely, and you can see that they're undercut a little bit underneath the longer layers that surround it. That always gives a nice natural look. So I think those bangs are right around four to four and a quarter, but like I said, they're layered and textured. Um, I would have to trim them just a little if I wanted to wear them straight down, but I think more so they're just really easy to sweep over the eyebrow and back to underneath the style. You just kind of see this coming to life, right? Just in terms of its movement, gentle lift there. Now this style isn't meant to be really big on top. This is more of a flat appearance, but again, just springing those fibers up a tad does give you a little bit of lift and I feel like that it would be <clears throat> sustainable. All right, so let's go through the specs a little bit with you. So let's see here. My goodness, I think that's probably every bit of 21 inches in length. Beautiful tousled beachy wave. Now a beach wave is just very casual. It's, it's like a broken, shattered spiral. And what I mean by that is, so just little air dried spirals that have been broken up with the fingers. It's also been texturized on the ends that gives it a beautiful casual look. The style weighs about five and a half ounces, which is actually not too doggone bad for all of this hair, for a long, long style like this. Um, usually I would expect anywhere from six to eight ounces on a style like this. So what's going on with that? Okay, so per first of all, you've got the traditional cap. There's some permatease, but there's no monofilament. Um, there's a nice, fine, light, baby fine, silky fiber. And it, it isn't dry on my piece, um, but it is very, very silky and baby fine. Okay. Um, and then in terms of permatease, you are going to see some permatease on the top, just a small amount actually. A little bit on the sides and back, um, and then some at the nape. It's not too thick and pillowy of, of a presence of permatease. I feel like it's very necessary on a cap like this, but it's just the right amounts in all the right places to support and sustain the style. Wow, that's a long one. I just can't get over it. <laughs> um, but you know what? It's a long style, but it's imminently more wearable with these bangs than if it had any longer of a fringe. Um, bangs are, they just, they make any style wearable like just throw and go kind of a thing. And I feel like this is one of those styles. Now in terms of, you know, wear and tear and tangling on a style like this, I imagine that this will perform like any other long synthetic piece. You're gonna have to take a little bit of extra care on the longer styles because when it drags the clothing or comes in contact with anything, it causes friction, which will rough up those fibers a little bit, cause a little bit of tangling and it will uh, eventually break down the synthetic fiber here. So I would recommend, you know, detangling after each use, possibly consider a silicone spray to protect the ends, such as the Simply Stylin uh, silicone spray. All of those links are below as well if you haven't tried that yet, but just anything you can do to be really mindful of caring for your longer wigs I think it's gonna go a long way. Now, they're not gonna last forever. Nothing you do is gonna make them last forever. And they're probably not even gonna last as long as your favorite shorter styles. <laughs> but to keep them looking their best while they're still alive, 
you will want to practice some extra TLC on this. Okay, I just about forgot to talk about this new color. Let's do that now. This is the Milky Opal R. And it is really icy and ashy in tone. So based on what I am looking at just with my own eye, and what you have to remember is these types of colors really pick up on the lighting around me. It makes it look a little shinier and lighter and brighter than it is in actual. There's nothing I can do about that. If you want to see me, if you want to see my set, I have to have these lights. Just know that they do make it look a little bit lighter and brighter. Now, I can already tell just by looking into the viewfinder here that this color is probably going to come across so ashy that it looks a little bit gray. I assure you there is no gray at all in this color. Um, although I feel like it would be an amazing color to transition to gray, or if you like rooted uh, gray shades, this would also be a nice color to, to try. Okay, so let's break it down here. To my eye, that first color is, that base color is an icy toned white. Now that white is more icy, not flat. And when I say toned, I just mean that it's very, very cool um, and may appear on camera as gray. Again, it's not gray, it is white. And then what kind of levels this up into that extra cool, almost gray, is the, um, the icy, medium to dark ash blonde highlighting. You can definitely see that. Now the Ash Blonde is the only thing that's giving this any kind of dimension and warmth. Uh, but again, it's not a warm color. I think you can kind of pick out this Ash Blonde in there. And then it's more, the Ash Blonde is more heavily concentrated in, in, the, in the nape area, which I noticed when I took it out of the box. And I think that also gives it some really beautiful dimension. This icy toned white and an icy ash, darker ash blonde. It's gorgeous. It is really, really gorgeous. And if you love those ash, light ash tones, platinums, whites, um, absent of any kind of yellow or gold, you're gonna love this. So let's talk about this root. The root is more of a medium toned brown root. Okay, I think it transitions well. Um, it's not too golden as if to really clash with the, the cool, the icy cool tones of the Milky Opal. 